16 class notes folder, I've opened the linked list class. Um, and over the t today, over the next couple of days, we'll, we'll complete all of this. Um, I've left in the Java doc comments just to save us time. So we don't have to type those. We can just focus on the method headers um, and the implementation of those methods. What we're actually going to start on is an important part of the linked list class. So in chapter 15, um, we've used a couple of words interchangeably, which is just fine in, fine in chapter 15. When we refer to like the stuff in a linked list, we'll say, oh, there's like, you know, how many elements are in our linked list or the linked list is made up of nodes. Um, now that we're actually implementing a linked list, we're going to be more specific with our terminology and we're going to differentiate between what we mean by an element in the linked list and what we mean by the node in a linked list. Okay. Um, the element in the linked list is based on the type specified for the generic. So if we have a linked list of turtles, each turtle in the linked list is an element. Okay. However, now that we're starting to actually code our own linked list, we realize like we need something else. We need something to, to hold on to a reference to that turtle, but we also need that thing to have references to whatever comes before previous and whatever comes after next. And so there's a new class um, that's kind of hidden, definitely hidden within the linked list um, that now we need to be aware of. And that's what we refer to as a node. So a node in a linked list is the internal object that yes, refers to the element, but also refers to the next and previous nodes as well. And that's what we're gonna call code first. Um, this is going to be internal to the class. Um, no one would ever use this node class directly, just like in chapter 15, we never use the node class directly. So we're gonna write here in, I'm on line 55 in the, we're going to have an inner class um, that represents a node. So we're going to say static class node. Because this is an inner class, um, we're not going to take the time to write a bunch of like accessor and mutator methods. The node is extremely simple. Um, and in fact, the code that we're going to write together over the next couple of days is a singly linked list, meaning we can only iterate forward through it. Um, we can find the next node, but we cannot find the previous node. And so therefore, the, context, the contents of each node is relatively simple. And we're going to make the instance variables public. And we're just going to say public object data. The data instance variable refers to the element in the list, whether that's a turtle, a string, a rectangle, whatever it happens to be. And then the second instance variable is of type node and it's called next. So one node refers to the next node, that next node refers to the next node and so on and so forth. We made these public because encapsulation isn't important because this class is, is private, it's internal to the linked list class. So we don't need the encapsulation benefits of accessors and mutators. Um, the reason why it's static is a little bit more complicated. We'll comment more on that later. Um, I will explain that later. It's just, we need a little bit more context first. Um, what else was I gonna say? Oh, one other thing that, that we're doing just to simplify things, it's challenging enough, I believe, for us to implement a linked list from scratch. We're not also going to implement it as a generic. What I mean by a generic is when you specify like a type inside of the angle brackets. Um, and then we would say stuff like, oh, the data is of type T. T could be a turtle, it could be a string, it could be a rectangle. Um, and we have, we've now made no to generic type and we can do the same with the linked list and stuff. We're not going to do that. Um, early versions of Java didn't support that either. And yet we all survived. So, um, we're just going to say that the data is of type object. And you may remember that the capital O object class is the ultimate superclass. Every class inherits from object. Okay. 
So we can store anything in here that, that we want. Um, it's just gonna be a little bit more cumbersome when we get stuff out of the, out of the list, but that's okay. When we get to the maze lab and we start writing our own stacks and queues, we will make those generic, but at that point we'll have the experience of the stacks and queues. So we're not as worried about, um, it won't be too much stuff at once. So just trying to explain why we're doing what we're doing at this point. All right, private inner class, public instance variables, cool. Let's, um, any questions about our node class so far? All right. Well, let's actually go use that node class. Let's go back up now to the top of the linked list class. And our class needs an instance variable and we don't have that yet. Um, this warrants, I think, a generic comment just explaining what it is. But here's the uh, private instance variable. This is it now a public class. This is our new linked list class. So we do want these instance variables to be private. We don't want anyone to directly access them. And so our only instance variable for our linked list class is called first. And first is a reference to the first node. Okay. If we know the first node, we can find all the other nodes. So first refers to the first node in this list. If the list is empty, first is null, okay? So if first is null, we're like, oh, okay, empty list. But you may be surprised that that's the only instance variable for a linked list. All the linked list class itself needs is a reference to the first node of the list. And from there, it can find everything else. That's kind of cool. All right, let's, uh, let's write a few methods. Let's write our default constructor. So it constructs an empty linked list. So I'm gonna say public linked list Default constructor, no parameters passed. Um, if we wanna construct an empty linked list, I'm just gonna be explicit. We technically don't even need this because first will be initialized by default to null, but I'm gonna be explicit and say this.first equals null. The method names that we're gonna be using are going to match the method names that we learned in chapter 15. I think that only makes sense. Um, the behavior of our linked list is gonna to try to match um, the behavior of the actual Java standard library linked list as well. And we're gonna see that here with this next method. It says returns the first element in the linked list. Um, our return type is gonna be object because we're not writing this as a generic. And you may remember, I hope you remember, our exam is tomorrow, that this method is called get first. And we're told to return the first element in the linked list, um, but we need to do some error handling here. We wanna support the same behavior as the Java standard library linked list. So we better check if there's actually anything in this linked list. So we'll do that, we'll say if, if this.first equals null, then we know the list is empty. And if you call get first on an empty list, the behavior is to throw a new no such element exception. Glad that that got completed. So if the list is empty, we throw a no such element exception, just like the Java standard library does. Otherwise, and this is where things get tricky, we return this.first.data. One of the reasons while implementing our own linked list is complicated is like cognitively it's challenging to keep track the difference between the nodes and the elements. We should ne we can never return a reference to a node from a public method because the node's a private internal class. 
no one outside of this class has any idea of what a node is and shouldn't be trying to use it. So we always need to return references to the actual elements stored, not to the nodes. So get first doesn't refer, doesn't return the first node, it returns the first element. So that's why we're gonna see lots of code like this.first.data. I think it's a little tricky to keep track of this all. And so my recommendation as you're working through this code and as we're doing some of the early practice programming activities, grab some scratch paper. I always have some on the back table. Draw a little picture. And I love drawing pictures where um, I draw the node and I label like data. And then I draw a little arrow to, the act to a box that represents like that element. Just to help you visually keep track of the nodes from the elements um, and how all of that works. Let's, honestly, we're gonna pause right here because the next method we're gonna write is a little bit tricky and I don't wanna rush it. So we'll pick this up again. Since it's been a couple of days, just to kind of review, uh, we started by writing this static inner class, which was the node. Remember that the node object represents like um, the data structure part of our linked list. And all the node object has is a reference to the actual data, the actual element stored in the linked list, and a reference to the next node in our linked list. We're in the process of implementing a singly linked list. That is a linked list uh, that we can only iterate through forward, not backwards, because there is no previous instance variable here in our node class. A doubly linked list is not that much harder. We just add another instance variable for previous and make sure we keep that updated as well. Um, but we just don't want that complexity as we're, as we're working our way through this. Um, the linked list class itself has a single instance variable, which is a reference to the first node. We wrote a constructor. If that instance variable is null, that means the list is empty. And then we wrote the get first method. Um, if there is nothing in the list, we throw the no such element exception. Otherwise, we return a reference to the data, not to the node. Right, the, the, we, will, we would never export like a reference to the node because the node is private and internal to this class. Um, we're gonna actually do add first. I think add is a little bit easier before we do remove. And so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna write each of these methods. We're already familiar with these methods from chapter 15. You're used to invoking them, you understand how they work. But now we're gonna look at it a little bit deeper in terms of what happens internally in terms of the nodes when we add an element, for example, to the front of the linked list. Oops. So, let's look at that. Here is our existing linked list at the top. This box represents the linked list object. The other two represent node objects. So the only instance variable in the linked list object is the reference to the first node. It's here. It has some data, Diana, it references some other node. We're gonna insert a new node with its own data at the beginning of this linked list. And so if we look through here in terms of what we have to do, we have to make a new node. We're given the data, but we have to make a new node object. We have to initialize it so that it ref refers to the data. And then we're gonna update two references. Um, and I think it's helpful to look at this visually first because the code can be a little confusing until we get used to it. So the order of operations here is really important. So, well, the first one kind of makes sense. You have to make the new node first, but we then need to update in this new node, we need to update the value of next to refer to the node that was the first node. Okay. We have to update this link first because the way we know which node is the first node is by the linked lists instance variable first. Once we update this link, then we can change the value of first to refer to the new node. If we were to have done it in the other order, if we would have changed the value of first to refer to the new node, then we're stuck because we lost this node. Right? There's no way for us to find it. We can't update next to refer to it. So the order in which we update our references 
our links in our linked list is really, really important. The diagram I think helps. Conceptually, it can be a little challenging. The good news is the code for all this stuff is usually really, really straight forward to write. It's just hard to wrap our head around what's going on. So let's take a look at that. All right, add first. So here's our little Java doc comment. So we're gonna say public void add first. It takes one parameter of type object, which is a reference to the element. Again, we aren't, um, we're not gonna write this as a generic class. We've got enough new stuff to learn. We'll worry about that later in the unit. So let's do each of those three steps. Step one was to make a new node. So I'm gonna make a local variable called new node, and I'm gonna assign it the reference return by making a new node. So now I, now I have a new node, and by default, the value of data is null, the value of next is null. Um, so I need to initialize my new node. So new node.data equals element, right? Initialize this new node to refer to the element that was specified as a parameter to add first. So that's really all step one. Step two was to have the new node linked to the, what was the first node in the linked list. So the way we do that is new node dot next equals this dot first. This refers to this linked list object. So the new node's next node will be this linked list's first node. That's step two, this line of code here. I think this, oops, I think this can be a little bit tricky, which is why I think looking at this picture and seeing this arrow is really helpful. So that's step number two in the diagram. Step number three in the diagram is to update this linked list's first instance variable to refer to the new node. That's step three. And that's all it takes to add a new element to the start of our linked list. Not bad at all. All right, well, let's look at what it takes to remove the node from the start of the list. Again, pay attention to the labels here. This box is our linked list object. These are each of the nodes. We have a linked list where the first node refers to the element Amy. The second node refers to the element Diana. We want to remove this node from the linked list. Um, this is even easier. All we have to do is update this linked list's first instance variable to refer to the second node in the list. The way we get there, because we're starting from here, right? So we always have to start from the linked list object. So how do we get the reference to the second node? Well, we can say first, that gets us to here, dot next, that gets us to here, okay? So that's how we find that reference. So let's look at the code. Now we are trying to be good about error handling, so we're gonna keep an eye on that too. The remove first method returns a reference to the object. We're gonna support that behavior. But we do need to check like, hey, what if, the, what if the list is empty, right? So if this dot first equals null, that's not okay. We're gonna throw another no such element exception. So we're gonna do our error handling first. I guess maybe it's a little bit more complicated than that diagram indicates because we do need to keep track of, of the reference to the actual element so we can return it. So I'm gonna cache that first with a local variable called element, L element, and that's gonna equal this dot first dot data. So we start chaining together all these dots. Um, 
let's look at the picture again real quick to make sure we got this. This is the linked list dot first follow that dot data. That's the element we actually want to return. Okay. Now we're going to change this dot first. We're going to assign that to this dot first dot next. So this dot first refers to the node we're removing. Dot next refers to the second node in the list. Store that reference in this dot first. So what was the second node now becomes the first. And then we simply return element. So again, just a few lines of code to do these operations. Um, but they're, they're complex lines of code. There's, there's a lot going on. We're following a lot of references all over the place. All right, we've written enough where um, we can actually use some of these methods. So let's switch over to the list demo class. <coughs> and let's actually create one of our linked lists and let's add some elements to it um, and take a look at what it looks like in the de debugger. So I'm gonna create a new linked list object and I'm gonna call it staff. We're gonna have a linked list of staff members. So I'm gonna say new linked list. And we've only written a few methods, but we have written add first. So we're gonna add Tom. And then we'll add Romeo. Again, these are all, these match the examples in the textbook. If you're looking at this later, or just curious where these names are coming from. Harry. Diana. So I'll give you a moment to type that, but then I'm gonna actually step through this for us in the debugger. So we can use the debugger to help us also visualize how this linked list is being built um, and what it looks like. Let's debug. Oops, I hit it twice. That's fine. All right, so here's our linked list. We can see that we're about to set first to null. It's already null, but we're being extra explicit. So right now our list is empty. If we look at staff here, we can say that first it's null. We're gonna add this first element. Here's something that I wanted to show you explicitly. Sometimes when we're writing our data structures, we have to write special cases, right? Like what if the list is empty? What if this, what if that? The nice thing about what we've written so far is even if the list is empty, it doesn't require any special case in the code. So we're gonna make our new node. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. We're gonna make our new node. We're gonna initialize the data element. And then here we're saying new node.next equals this.first. First is null, but who cares? So we assign the value null to it. That's the last node in the list. Its instance variable next should be null. There is no next node. Um, so we didn't need a special case here to check if the list is empty. It just all works, which is wonderful. Um, and so now if we look at our linked list, we can see that the first element refers to Tom and the next element is null. 
So I think that helps us. The debugger can be a really good tool for this. All right, we're gonna add Romeo now. So let's step into that. We make a new node, we initialize it. We're gonna set new node not dot next to this dot first. Um, so our new node here, once I step over this, its next value now refers to Tom. That's what it should be. Romeo's going first and then Tom. We update our linked list. So the first element is now Romeo. If I open up next, I can see that that refers to Tom, okay? So the debugger can be really helpful to help us check that we're building the, the linked list as expected. And then we'll do Harry and then we'll do Diana. And so now Diana is first, who's next? The node that refers to Harry, who's next? The node that refers to Romeo, who's next? The node that refers to Tom. Perfect. Looks really good.